When Papa came home from work on the 11th of December, Mama and Joaquin were waiting for him. Have you found out what she was called? asked Joaquin. Let me in first, complained Papa. Yes, she was called Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hanson, in fact. It happened in December 1948. Dinner was ready, so they sat down at the table. I went into the bookshop as well, continued Papa. I went into the storeroom with him and there he found a photo that the flower seller had once put in his window in exchange for a glass of water. I have it in my briefcase. Then fetch it, said Mama. So he did. He put the picture on the table. Joaquin snatched it and Mama leaned over it. It showed a young woman with long fair hair. Round her neck she was wearing a silver cross set with a red stone. She was leaning against a small car. At the top of the photo was a large stone. At the bottom was written Elizabeth. Hmm. No last name, said Papa. It's not exactly an unusual name, but it's written in Norwegian. It may be country in, in many countries, Elizabeth is spelt differently. Do you think she's not Norwegian then, said Mama? No idea, said Papa. But look at the photo carefully. The dome in the background is St Peter's in Rome. She's standing in the road that leads to St Peter's Square. The car dates from the end of the 50s. I feel almost scared, whispered Mama. What are we getting mixed up in? Yes, it's a mystery, but there's no reason to believe that the girl who disappeared in 1948 is the same as the woman in the photograph, said Papa. He sat staring in front of him. He wasn't at the market, he said. Who? You're talking in riddles, said Mama. The flower seller, John, the man with water. I'd give a lot for a talk with him, for there's one thing we can take for granted. It was he who made this strange calendar. Now he's disappeared. That was all he said. Joaquin was thinking about it all so much that he wanted to go to bed early and it wouldn't be so long before it was morning again and he'd get to know more about Elizabeth Hansen and the Angel of Burial. When he woke up on the 12th of December, Mama and Papa were in his room before he had managed to open his eyes. That was a bit special because it was Saturday when Joaquin was usually up long before the others. You must open the calendar, said Papa. Hurry up! It was obvious that he would have liked to open it himself. The picture was of a man in a red tunic holding a large sign. Mama and Papa sat on the bed. Joaquin had picked up a little piece of paper folded over and over. He smoothed it out and read aloud what was written on the paper in very tiny writing. Quirinius. The five sheep had crossed a ridge and begun to run down into a fertile agricultural district. Imperial trotted around the little flock and after the sheep and the cherub that came Jacob and Joshua, Caspar and Balthazar, Ethereal and Elizabeth. They passed Lake Beale and then several more lakes. The biggest and most beautiful was Lake Geneva. It glittered so that it looked as if a piece of heaven had fallen down to earth. Only when Elizabeth looked up and saw there was no hole in the sky was she able to be quite sure that the picture of the sky in the big lake was only a reflection. Again they ran along an old road alongside a river in a deep valley. Ephiriel told them that the river was called the Rhone and that all the water it carried with it from the Alps ran down first into Lake Geneva and later right down to the Mediterranean. They ran across an old bridge to the other side of the river and stopped in front of a monastery called St Maurice. They were at high Alps on every side with snow on their peaks. The time is 1079 after Christ, explained Ephiriel. The monks have lived here among these tall mountains, praising God and his creation ever since the 7th century. The monastery is built around the grave of the Holy Saint Maurice, who was killed here in this valley in the year 285 because he refused to worship the Roman gods. He had only just finished speaking when a monk walked out of the monastery. He greeted them with a slight nod. Gloria Dei, he said. And the same to you, said Elizabeth, even though she did not understand stood what the monk was saying. She thought one of them ought to answer him. Only then did the monk notice the two angels who knelt on the grass and said, Alleluia, Alleluia. And it was clear that they weren't used to angels visiting them at the monastery. 
even though it was so high up in the Alps that it was close to the angels in heaven. Imperial rose above the ground, flew towards the monk, gently beating his wings and said in a voice soft as silk, fear not and be in no wise afraid. We are only going to Bethlehem to greet the Christ child. Then King, of King Caspar of Nubia strode up to the monk. He said, peace be with you in your monastery. It is true what the angel has said. We are on our way to the Holy Land to pay homage to the King of Kings in Bethlehem, the city of David. With those words, they set off again. They came to a little place called Martini, where there was an old Roman theatre. The Romans used this route over the Alps too, explained the angel of Ethereal. Much later, Napoleon crossed the Alps with his army. To Bethlehem, called Joshua, and they sped upwards towards the high mountains. The air was so thin and clear that Elizabeth thought she must be on the way to heaven. From time to time, they saw a mountain hare, a marmot or an alpine goat. Up in the air circled crows and vultures and now and again a grouse stared up from the bushes. At the top of the mountain pass stood a large house. The time is 1,045 years after Christ, said the angel of Ithuriel. That house is a hospice whose purpose is to look after people who are crossing the Alps. It's brand new and has been built by Bernard of Menton. From now on and for the rest of time, the Benedictine monks will live up here and organise a rescue service for people who are lost in the mountains. They are helped by their clever St Bernard dogs. Right! said the cherub imperial, but Jesus wanted to teach humans to help one another when they were in distress. Once he told a story about a man who was on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho and was attacked by robbers who left him half dead at the side of the road. Several priests passed by, but none of them bent down to help the poor man, though he was in danger of losing his life. Jesus thought there wasn't any point being priests if they couldn't even be bothered to help a fellow human being in distress. They might just as well forget all their prayers. Elizabeth nodded and Imperial continued. But then the Samaritan came past and Samaritans were not very popular in Judea because their religion was a bit different from that of the Jews. But the Samaritan had compassion on him and helped the unfortunate man so that he saved his life. Yes, indeed. For there's no sense in believing in what's right unless it leads to helping people in distress. Elizabeth nodded again and hid the cherub's words in her heart. At one point where the paths forked, a man was standing with a large sign in his hand. He was wearing a long red tunic. If he had not moved, one might have thought he was a petrified Roman from the Roman Empire. On the sign was written to Bethlehem in capital letters. An arrow had been drawn in as well to show which path they should follow. A living road sign, exclaimed Elizabeth. Ethereal nodded. Verily I say unto you that road sign must be one of us. Imperial was so excited that he flew right up to the man and shouted at him, Fear not! Fear not! Fear not! But the man with the sign was not at all affrighted. He took a step towards Elizabeth, offered his hand and said, Congrat... No, that wasn't quite correct. Uh, I mean, it's your service, my friends. The very thing I must remember to do is to say my name because I too have been allowed to take part in this advent calendar. My name is Quirinius, Governor of Syria. Attractive appearance, closer acquaintance desired. Well, well, the most important thing is, of course, to be good and kind, Dixie. Elizabeth couldn't help laughing. He talked so oddly. It was as if there were two people talking at once, for he interrupted himself the whole time. He, and he handed her the sign. He had perhaps been standing and holding it for an eternity with the wind flapping in his tunic. He said, And this, I am asking for your attention, my friends, for here I have the actual prize. I ought to say that this prize is for you, Dixie. Am I to have the sign? asked Elizabeth in astonishment. Quirinius replied, only on the one side. I mean, you must turn it right round, you understand? He licks it. Elizabeth didn't understand. 
understand why he said Dixie all the time. There was no dog or cat anywhere near, but the angel of Gabriel whispered that Dixie was Latin and meant he'd finished speaking. Elizabeth turned the sign round and saw to her great surprise that she was holding in her hand was an advent calendar with 24 doors to be opened. Above each door was painted a picture of a young woman with fair hair. She was standing in front of a church with a large dome on top. The first twelve, said Quirinius, she may open the first twelve doors because for we've come exactly so far on our journey. Dixie. Elizabeth sat down on a rock and opened the first door. Behind it was a picture of the lamb, behind the next door was an angel and behind the third a sheep. Then there followed pictures of a shepherd, another sheep, a king of Orient, a sheep, a shepherd, a sheep, a cherub and another king of Orient. Elizabeth saw that they were pictures of everyone who had joined the pilgrimage on its long way through Europe. But who was the lady? Thank you so very much, she said. Quirinius shook his head. On the contrary, what you said last was quite wrong because you're not the one to say thank you, I am. I thank you and the others here for allowing an old Roman like myself to join this godly group which is on the right way to Bethlehem. After all, it was not I. It was in fact you who set off after the first delightful lamb. Dixie, Dixie, Dixie. Elizabeth looked up at a fury and laughed. <laughs> but, but you haven't opened the twelfth door, said the angel. Elizabeth opened the twelfth door as well, and now she was looking down at a tiny picture of a fair-haired woman in front of the big dome of a church. Joshua struck his shepherd's crook against a cairn. To Bethlehem! To Bethlehem! How far is it to Bethlehem now? asked Elizabeth. Not very far said Ephiriel. They sat looking at each other. Then Joachim began to laugh. I hope Quirinius is going all the way to Bethlehem with them, he said. Mama and Papa went on examining the piece of paper. He's brought the young woman into the story of Elizabeth today. And then he's made another little advent calendar inside the big one, said Mama. Papa nodded. Of course, he must have meant something by it. Do you think there's yet another calendar inside the little advent calendar, said Joachim. Who knows, said Mama. Who knows? <laughs>